All right, today we're breaking down one of the more recognizable muscles of the back. We're talking about the trapezius. So this is a big one that deals with posture, shoulder mobility, shoulder stability. It's a big powerhouse muscle, does a lot more than you might think. So we'll really talk about it in depth. Uh, we're gonna mention origin, insertion, uh, innervation. Maybe we'll throw in some clinical tidbits as well. So let's get into it. The traps are a vanity muscle for sure. Not just very superficial, but the most superficial of that back, upper back, posterior cervical aspect for sure. Big boy, big muscle articulates with the entirety of the cervical and thoracic spine. As we can see, it's a really huge diamond shaped muscle that's arranged into three parts by fiber orientation. So here we've got the ascending portion, we've got here the descending, and then right here in the middle, we've got what we simply call the middle fibers, the middle part of the trapezius. Most superficial muscle of the back, so a lot of emphasis on training for bodybuilders. They'll say, work the traps for a wider bag, work the lats for a deeper bag. As we mentioned, we've got articulation with the entirety of the C and T spine. So we start off at that external occipital protuberance, which is that lump on the back of your head. Travels down, articulates with that nuchal ligament which is the length of the c spine c1 down to c7 we've got articulation the spinous processes of t1 to t12 so the entire thoracic spine so spans a pretty wide range for sure inserts into the lateral third of the clavicle we can see that here as well as the acromion, which is a bit more lateral, and then the length of that spine of the scapula, so travels in medially as well. So looking at that, we could imagine how it could add a lot of shoulder stability. And then with the size and the, the magnitude of that muscle, we could imagine it gives a lot of mobility as well. As far as innervation goes, the primary innervation for the trapezius is the spinal accessory nerve. So that's cranial nerve 11. I say primary, there's also some research that shows there's some cervical plexus innervation of the trapezius as well. So primarily C2, C3, C4, we see those nerve roots will sometimes send fibers into the trapezius as well to help with that motor function. The primary innervation for the trapezius is the spinal accessory nerve. When we look at the trapezius, or really any muscle in anatomy, it's a situation where form follows function, or maybe the other way around, function follows form. Big muscle, originates in the entirety of the cervical and thoracic spine. Also that external occipital protuberance um, inserts into the scapula and clavicle. So very big muscle that all comes to a point on that scapula. We've got fibers above, fibers below, fibers at the side. So very strong, powerful stabilizer. A lot of stability for sure. But if we activate maybe just one portion of that large muscle, we can get very specific shoulder actions. So those upper fibers right here, those descending fibers elevate the scapula. So the shrug motion, that upward rotation motion, both if you activate the descending fibers, you get those motions. 
those metal fibers retract the scapula. So if you're trying to squeeze those shoulder blades together, you're working that middle trapezius. Those lower fibers, these ascending fibers, depress and assist with upward rotation. So they bring those shoulder blades down and then rotate a little bit. So when we raise our arms up, we get a bit of that upward rotation. That's that lower trapezius kicking in a little bit. So all together, a lot of postural support, a lot of shoulder stability, and also we've got some shoulder mobility when acting sort of independently. So very, very hardworking muscle right there. Clinically speaking, this is a very interesting muscle. I think just in general, PTs will pay a lot of attention to and show a lot of love to those bigger muscles or bigger muscle groups. And this is a big one, most superficial of that upper back, large, covers a large amount of space. So when someone comes in with upper back pain or neck pain, or maybe even tension headaches, it is one that I think of immediately. Uh, very common that you would see pathology, including the trapezius. Poor posture, it's a very big posture muscle. We'll see people with that forward head posture or who have to sit at a desk all day and look closely at a screen may have a bit more tension in those upper traps. Uh, of course, the stress plays a big role. Commonly an overuse type thing as well, just that postural overuse, especially in the gym. If you're a big gym goer, you might be doing a lot of shrugs and overhead movements that will start to work that trapeze a little bit. So I do find myself doing a lot of the modalities, a lot of the modality type treatments and manual techniques to the upper traps including trigger point dry needling ischemic compression there's a lot of good research for those modalities when it comes to treating trapezius type function or those upper back neck impairments right if We've got pain in those areas. It has been shown beneficial to treat the trapezius. There's a study I was looking at recently, spoke to dry needling and trigger point release in the upper traps. And it just involved three treatments over a one week period. So every other day, they saw pain and function had improved two weeks later and three months later. So. Not only did they have the immediate relief and they felt those symptoms sort of disperse following the treatment, but two weeks later, they felt better. Three months later, they still felt better. So uh, one of those where I think the trapezius, the upper trap specifically, a very big modality muscle. So pretty cool to look at if you're a newer PT. One of those where maybe we'll just work the trapezius a little bit if they've got some general neck, upper back, shoulder problems. So that wraps it up. Nice little trapezius outlook, overlook. Looking at hitting the deltoid after this one, either the deltoid or the lats, I'm not sure, both are on my mind as of late. Staying in that upper thoracic shoulder region is my primary goal, but yeah, both have called to me uh, after finishing this one. Definitely subscribe if you're into muscle by muscle breakdowns of the anatomy with maybe some cool clinical insights, looking at doing a full series, full series, first series of many, hopefully. All right, shuttle DPT, later.